I do have a question about this distinction between interpretations and theories. People use the word interpretations of quantum mechanics a bit differently, I've gathered from some of the conversations that I've had. And many of them have been with philosophers. And many philosophers, some of whose work might come up in this conversation, I don't know, have, have pointed out that these might not be or they aren't different interpretations of one theory. I mean, Bohmian mechanics versus GRW, these are different theories that make different predictions. So I just wanted to ask you what it is that you're referring to when you say the interpretations of quantum mechanics. Yeah, I'm. I'm not aware of any successful modifications of quantum mechanics. Um, and so to the extent that there are different theories, I'd be quite interested in learning more uh, about, about them. Uh, to my knowledge, it's very difficult to change anything about quantum mechanics uh, in a way that doesn't immediately make it either not self-consistent, like mathematically inconsistent, or inconsistent with observation. Um, I, I suspect that that's a pretty controversial statement, but I, um, you know, it's, it, it, I think that I, I'm aware of, I've certainly have heard a lot of talks by people who've been trying to sort of get back to a more, what, what they consider, I think, again, based on a subjective bias, a more uh, objective reality. Uh, like maybe this decoherence somehow happens automatically all the time due to, I don't know, quantum gravity, some coupling. To, so if you want that to happen, then you have to couple your system to some other system that we don't observe that sort of takes, that plays the role of the environment. Like if, if, you, don't, if you don't want this to be an emergent phenomenon that happens because of practical reasons, we can keep track of the molecules in the room, that makes it an emergent phenomenon. It's not a fundamental thing. Uh, I think a lot of people are trying to come up with ideas where it becomes a fundamental thing. And you know, the wave function collapses, and it's really objective. And everybody will agree that this happened, no matter how much information they have about the world. Uh, th that's very problematic. It's a bit like introducing an ether or something like that. You know, you're, you're, you're clinging to, uh, to your old ideas, and it forces you to introduce things that you can never actually observe and have them do the work for you. Um, so. I, I really struggle with the idea of, of what it even means to, yeah, what does this mean to interpret a physical theory? I think what we should ask is, what does the theory tell us? What, uh, what consequences does it have? And we should, we should seek out the ones that make us the most uncomfortable. We should sharpen those. We should, you know, push as hard as we can on the sore spots, and and see where do we land? Do we land on an actual self inconsistency of the theory, some kind of self contradictory statement that's mathematically impossible, logically impossible? Do we land on a conflict with observation? Oh, maybe I don't know. Uh, quantum mechanics is in conflict with special relativity and allows things to go faster than the speed of light. Turns out it doesn't. Or do we land on, wow, you know, this thing hangs together completely. It's self-consistent. It's consistent with observation. And the world is just so wild and isn't that fun. You know, and let's, let's just take it all in. And I feel like with quantum mechanics, we're, we're clearly there. That's, that's where quantum mechanics is. It's, it's almost, you know, I once wrote a contribution to some, some book about the, the unreasonable fact that quantum mechanics is the only theory of physics um, for which we don't already know that it's false or at least limited. It's we know that, for example, general relativity, which is an unbelievably beautiful theory that you know, describes uh, how the apple falls, how the universe expands, so many different things. We know it's not the final word. It predicts its own demise by predicting singularities inside black holes. We don't know what the Big Bang is and so on. It, the theory is, and also it just doesn't involve quantum mechanics and we know the world is quantum. So we know that theory is at some level wrong. 
right? And that's not, not a bad thing. Physics has always progressed by having theories that are just better and better approximations. You describe more and more things, more and more accurately from fewer ingredients. That's sort of what defines the progress. So it's not normal for a theory to be like quantum mechanics and to have no recognizable flaw. That not, that's not that I mean to say that we know for sure that it's going to be part of whatever the complete description of all phenomena is, or some unified quantum gravity theory. I don't know that. But unlike with gravity, I, where I know the classical theory is definitely not going to survive at that level, with quantum mechanics, it's entirely possible it'll survive. It's, it's um, in my view, completely self-consistent. And it just has elements in it that make us you know, that, that, that are a little bit hard to swallow. Um, but I don't think they're qualitatively that much harder to swallow than telling you that, you know, you can't accelerate beyond the speed of light or that space and time are curved. It's just not, you know, it's not how we grew up.